Welcome back to Market Movers. I'm Cheddar, everyone. I'm Kristen Schiller here at the Stock Exchange. If you've been with us for a long time at Cheddar, you hear the music and you do know what time it is. Time to take a look at Pops and Flops, an old nostalgia play. We used to do this way back in the day on Cheddar, and we are reviving it here on the new Cheddar. So let's take a look at what is moving and shaking today. Palantir, that stock, publicly traded company, on the move, up close to 27%. So talk about a good day. It's after the company reported high demand for its artificial intelligence projects and its latest earnings. The company launched 600 pilots with its AI tech last year, and the chief executive, Alex Karp, wrote to shareholders that demand, quote, continues to be unrelenting for large language learning models like ChatGPT. Elsewhere, shares of Eli Lilly, this is an interesting story, uh, actually down today. It's down about 1.5%, reversing some decent gains earlier in the session. Uh, the company reported blockbuster sales, especially of its weight loss drug, Monjaro. That's a competitor with Wegovi and Ozempic. I'm sure even if you don't talk about stocks, I'm sure you talk about this, probably in your friend or family circle. The company also has sales of the recently approved, excuse me, Zetbound. I keep having hiccups today. Uh, Eli Lilly had $9.3 billion in revenue in the latest quarter, 28% higher than the year before. And it did cite the approval of Zepbound, higher prices for Manjaro, the weight loss drug, and its cancer treatment, uh, Verzenio, behind that drop, behind that gain, uh, decent gain, double-digit gain, in fact, in sales. Uh, finally, shares of DocuSign on the move. Let's take a look. The stock is down 4%. Says it's going to lay off about 6% of its workforce as it restructures. Well, the layoffs will be concentrated in the company's sales and marketing teams, and it does represent about 440 jobs. DocuSign said the restructuring plan should be complete by mid-2025, and it expects it'll cost between $28 and $32 million. All right, let's bring in our next guest to talk more about how these markets are faring, what it means for you and your money. Uh, joining me now is Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's talk about the state of the market right near record highs, but kind of a mixed market today. What do our viewers need to know? I think the market's going to hold the uptrend, barring certain things that may or may not happen this year. Like, for example, if the Fed decides to raise rates, which they're not talking about, but if they do, or if something happens overseas where we get into a world war, which God forbid would happen. But I think for, for this year, for 2024, the market's probably going to be stable and hold the uptrend. It doesn't mean we're not going to have any sell-offs in between. We could. And I think one of the interesting things that came out the last week is the market was expecting the Fed to actually cut rates the first part of this year. And Powell said that they're really not planning on doing that in March. And so then people started to be not as optimistic as they were before that rates would go down the first part of this year. But the market, even though it sold off a little bit, ended up flipping right back around. We had some great earnings last week, Thursday night into Friday. We had fabulous earnings in Meta. It just blew out all the numbers, Amazon. And really, the market started to rally and, and looks like it's going to continue, again, barring certain things that could or could not happen for the remainder of 2024. So what should investors uh, do, Melissa, in that scenario? If they haven't put money to work already in this market, uh, would you advise that they do that? Well, it's tough for people to go long here when we rallied so much in the last few months and even in 2023. But I, I want to tell you that the market still could be higher. So it depends on your time horizon if you want to jump in now. If you're talking about your retirement accounts and you're you know, under the age of 50 or even 55, I think you have plenty of time for the market to continue higher. And most of the life of the market, it does stay in an uptrend. And there are funds in the market. There are retirement funds in the market. So even when we have these wild swings like we saw in 2020 with COVID, the market bounced back. We continued higher after that, if you remember that big dip. And then we continue to make new highs. I think if you're really worried about it or if you're an angel, you don't want to be long-term invested, look for specific stocks that you want to get in. And again, whether they're longs or shorts, if you can short, 
you can do swing trades long, you can do options, and then you should look for those specific picks. For example, NVIDIA, of course, everyone's been talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA was over 700 today. It was actually over 710 in the pre-market. It was, was falling today with the overall market since the open, but NVIDIA is definitely getting hit over on the live day. That 700 number, that stock could just scream higher, continue to scream higher. That's a good long pick. Again, individual stock picks, I think, are the way to go. And one of the other things that I like as well is Meta. I still think Meta's higher. Again, that's falling a little bit today with the overall market, but the jump that that had last week was so big, so huge, mm -hmm. so unexpected that, I mean, I'm looking for 500 in that stock at mm. some point, and it could be sooner than later. Interesting. Okay, so uh, even after a 42% gain in the NASDAQ, which certainly would encapsulate large technology like Meta, the semiconductors like an NVIDIA as well, uh, you think, Melissa, I'm hearing that you think we can still go higher, for instance, in the NASDAQ and that this AI hype is still very palpable. Is that the case? Absolutely. Again, you know, I just thought of it when you were talking about the market. The other one thing besides the two things about rates and then a war, I'm just thinking this out loud is if we have another regional bank failure or any kind of bank failure. Remember, I don't know if you talked about this this week, the New York Community Bank has Again, their price has just tanked in the last 48 hours. If for some reason another regional bank were go under and scare the, the banking sector, the financial sector, that could also set this market off course. So even if that does, I think it's temporary, though. It would be temporary. And again, we would rally back. So if you're going to go long here at the highs, know that we could drop back and then push higher. Again, your time frame depends a lot of that. Your risk tolerance depends a lot of that. But again, some of these regional banks don't look so good in the last couple of days. And so there mm. could be some bad news on the horizon for that sector. Again, the regional banks, some of the banks look great. JPM looks great. That's screaming higher. That started out earning season and made brand new all time highs. So be very, very careful. All I can say is be very, very careful what you decide to get into. But the overall market, yes, I think is higher. It may not be fast as people think. It's going to go. We may not see that 500 number in this in the SPY or the S&P yet, but we're going to see it, and we're probably going to see it this year in 2024. And I don't think the Fed is really going to change much in the course that they're at. They're trying to they're trying to keep saying, well, we want to bring inflation down. Yes, inflation has gone down slightly, a tid, a tad, not as much as people want though. If you're a consumer and you're shopping, you're like, oh my gosh, prices are still so high. So based on that, I just don't think the Fed is going to drop rates as much as people think this year, or as soon as they think this year. Mm -hmm. uh, very good, Melissa. Well, as we talk about some individual stocks, I want to hit on Boeing as well. I do see that the stock technically is up today, I think more than 1%. Uh, earlier on Tuesday, but certainly this company is just having a uh, PR issue after PR issue. And I think certainly airlines and consumers, flyers that is, uh, wondering how does this company get back on track after years, even pre-pandemic, um, of issues with a 737 MAX plane? What's your take on Boeing and what it means for staff? Boeing has a lot of problems. First of all, came out, the news came out today that they're going to have some labor issues because the employees of the unions want a 40 percent pay raise going into the negotiations in the spring that, that's a huge massive jump part of the issue also is i think they lost people with COVID. they lost experienced employees during COVID that maybe took early retirement and they uh, obviously the airlines had trouble during COVID. now they hired new people and some of these people maybe are not as experienced as the as the other people that were working for boeing for a long time that took their early retirement and now you're having all of these mechanical issues, which they still have not figured out. The fact that they had earnings last week, if you look at the chart, you can't even tell me the date of the earnings. That's abnormal for any stock chart, if you look at the technicals. And they came out, they really didn't give any guidance. I don't even know how they got away with that, to be honest with you. That is just, I mean, if you're a, if you're an investor, if you're if you're if you own the stock, you're like, wait a minute, you're not gonna give any guidance on what's gonna happen next. I think that that was a negative sign to, to me. And I know the stock's up today and I know it's rallying and people are probably thinking this is a great price to buy it. Well, you know, it could drop another five, 10, 20 points. So yeah, it's a great price if you think the stock is higher, but the stock is currently in a downtrend and it's been in a downtrend for quite a long time. 
even before COVID, Boeing has been in a downtrend. The last time this stock made brand new all-time highs, I think, was 2019. It's nowhere near those numbers, nowhere near them at all. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. overall market, like we just talked about, has been rallying and is in an uptrend and is strong and is making new highs. And you're not seeing that with Boeing. And I think that's a problem. So you have the mechanical issues. You're going to have some employing problems. They're going to cost them. And then you have them not giving any guidance on the earnings. This is bad, bad, bad. So my take on it, yes, the stock's rallying today, and that's all well and good if you went long this morning, but I don't think it's going to last. Interesting. Okay, good to know. Um, you're right, is that stock is up 1% today, uh, but many, many issues uh, that we've seen. So let's talk about maybe some of the sectors, even stocks aside from Boeing, Melissa, that you don't like. I know you're still bullish on technology, <laughs> bullish on the broader market, bullish on Meta and NVIDIA, for instance. Uh, any ones other than Boeing, stocks and sectors, that you would be staying away from? Well, I don't like Tesla right now higher. So that's another one that has been pushing back up the last two days a little bit. But, and again, you know, that's one that is tied directly to Musk. And it came out last week. They had the news last week about the court case in Delaware. The stock reacted to that negatively. And I, for me personally, again, the cost of these these cars, these EVs, is so, so expensive, and they have a lot of other competitors now. So it depends on, I guess, who wins the 2024 presidential race, because if some of these guidelines change, some of these regulations change, then it could affect the stock Tesla negatively even more so than it's been. Not everybody wants to go out and wants to buy electric cars yet. One, again, they're very expensive, and two, they're not convenient. There's not an electrical station everywhere you go, and you can't go in and fill up in like five minutes, ten minutes. So I think Tesla, I'm not saying Tesla's seen the best of their highs and that they'll never go back up again, but I think right now, in the short term, the next few weeks, the next few months, Tesla isn't looking good. And they had bad earnings yeah. as well. So to that end, Melissa, there was a Wall Street Journal report um, just with in the past 48 hours, we'll say, uh, recently that's been getting a lot of traction, that some board members are concerned um, about drug use by Elon Musk. All that, yeah. And, and that they feel pressure. They have felt pressure, some of them, at times uh, to use drugs with the Tesla founder. In terms of the leadership, right, Musk wants more ownership uh, over Tesla, but the board, um, obviously, via this Wall Street Journal story, pushing back. How much does Musk's leadership of Tesla impact the stock? I think it impacts it a lot. I think he needs to be at the helm of it. He's one of the reasons for the success in that company and many other companies uh, that he started as well. I mean, there's a reason why either, he, you know, he's one of the richest people in the world. I mean, he's highly intelligent and very smart. And as far as the drug use goes, I mean, this isn't new news. I mean, he was, I think he was on Joe Rogan's show a couple of years ago and he was smoking pot. So I'm not sure what drugs specifically they're talking about, but this isn't new news to me that he does drugs. He's handling it, whatever he's doing, he's still a very intelligent guy. And I think that he's the innovator, he's the businessman. He, he has big ideas and big dreams, and they've worked out for all the companies that he's been at the helm with. And I think that that, along with what we were just talking about, if, if there, anyone thinks that he would step away from Tesla or he would reduce what he's doing, his leadership role in Tesla, I think that would be horrible for shareholders and horrible for the stock. And the Melissa, man that... I'm going to jump what? in. I'm getting, I'm getting a cue oh. that we got to wrap because we're tight on oh, time. Uh, but a lot of good info in this segment. Melissa Armo, thank you for joining, as always. And stay with us because we'll have more cheddar. Up